Hey everyone, today we're talking about how to get that money back that your spouse spent on a mistress or they spent gambling or that they tried to hide away by giving to someone else or by purchasing an asset that was then hidden or by spending it all on their alcohol or drug use, spending it in an inappropriate way, spending it in a way that's unrelated to the marriage. You may be entitled to get that money back and what it's called is dissipation. That's the legal term. My name is Bobby Buchanan. I'm a divorce lawyer in Illinois, and this is Illinois Divorce TV. So let's dive in and talk about this thing called dissipation. There are three essential elements to dissipation and, and using it to your benefit to get back that money that was wasted. The first element is that the money has to be spent from marital property. And marital property, as simply put as possible, is property that's acquired during the marriage. That's way simpler than it, what it really is. But you can't claim dissipation. For example, your spouse inherits a million dollars from their grandmother or their parents. That inheritance goes directly into their name and goes into a bank account with their name on it. That's clearly non-marital property. They then spend all that money on their mistress. That may be heartbreaking, but it's not dissipation and you're not going to benefit from claiming dissipation in the divorce case. It has to be marital money that they're spending. So maybe they earned a bunch of money. They put it into their bank account, put it into your joint bank account, put it into their sole bank account. Doesn't matter because they were earning it during the marriage. So it is marital property. And then they started to take their mistress on these secret vacations, or they started to spend that money on their gambling habit, or they got into a substance abuse problem and, and drugs and alcohol, and they, they spent all the money on those sorts of things. That could quite possibly be dissipation. But there are some other conditions that we have to look at in order to call it dissipation. The timing is incredibly important when we're talking about dissipation. These, this sort of spending that is called dissipation is, has to occur during the irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. Some things are just kind of inherently tied to the irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. Certainly spending money on a mistress is very closely tied to the irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. But doing drugs, alcohol, gambling, those things aren't necessarily ir tied to the irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. So it's a very fact-specific determination, meaning it's not a black and white rule. It's not, we can't just say, okay, if you did this, then it is during the irretrievable breakdown of the marriage. If you did that, then it's not. We have to look at the very specifics of when it occurred. So the timing of it, which funds it came from, it had to come from marital property and what kind of use was, what was the use of that money? It has to be in an inappropriate use. A, and a use that's unrelated to a marital purpose. That can be a bunch of different things as well, but like I said at the, at the top of this video, it's going to be those the most typical things is going to be spending money on a mistress. Uh, maybe you want your spouse wanted to get rid of money, so they bought a um, what do they call those things? Oh, I'm, I'm blanking on the name now. It's like Bitcoin, but it's um, uh, a non-fungible token, an NFT. Yeah, maybe they bought one of those silly NFTs that went down in value incredibly, and that's how they were hiding their money or something like that. I don't know. I don't really understand how those things work, but that's what I'm talking about is they, they buy some sort of asset that's worth nothing, but they can later get it back and get their money back or maybe they hid the money in an offshore account. They took some action so that you wouldn't be able to get this money. And that's really a lot of these, what it relates to is they're taking action so that you can't get the money. There's also the actions such as alcohol, drug use, gambling, addiction related actions that just waste the money away. They're not intentionally do it so you can't get the money. 
Um, but though that is another area of dissipation. So how do you get it back then? Well, you have to claim dissipation in your divorce, in your divorce. You have to make, do what's called a notice of claim of dissipation in your divorce. And there's very specific timing on when you need to do it. There's a certain sort of allegation style that you have to make in the notice in order to make sure that it's proper. Otherwise, if you go to trial and just tell the judge about it or just prove it with evidence and then say, judge, and, and then at the end of it, say, judge, this is dissipation. We want to get our share back. The judge is going to say, well, where, where's your notice of claim of dissipation? And you will be S O L. So there is a way to get that money back. You have to do it in the right way. The timing has to be right as to when that money was spent and you have to follow the proper procedure. Don't miss your opportunity to get that money back because it is there and it is one of the best ways that you can offset some of this activity by your spouse that was so hard to swallow in the first place. That's it for today. Subscribe, follow if you found this useful. Leave us a comment or question. Let us know what you'd like to hear uh, about next and I will talk to you soon.